Good morning from Sue and me. You're watching the BBC's Breakfast News. It's half past six. The headlines this morning, Thursday, the 21st of November. There are claims of atrocities from both sides in the Yugoslav civil war. After the fall of Vukovar, the Serbians are claiming that retreating Croat troops massacred over 40 Serbian schoolchildren. Downing Street says it doesn't rule out a future referendum on Europe. MPs vote tonight on the government's stand on Europe at the end of their two-day debate. And President Bush has authorized one and a half billion dollars in food aid for the Soviet Union to prevent shortages this winter. Now this morning's business headlines from Paul Burton. Good morning. Good morning. While MPs debate the theory of European Monetary Union, the Treasury wrestles with the reality. The Bundesbank meets this morning. Will Germany's central bankers force the Chancellor to raise rates to protect the besieged pound? Creditors of the Maxwell family tread cautiously as the debt crisis takes a turn for the worse. Thailand confronts the downside of having the world's fastest growing economy. And on the overnight markets, the Nikkei is little changed, but the pound is weaker. Thanks, Paul. Business breakfast in a moment, but first a summary of this morning's national and international news from Sue. Thank you. Good morning. In Yugoslavia, the warring factions have accused each other of committing atrocities. Croatian forces retreating from the town of Vukovar are alleged to have killed Serbian families, including at least 40 children. Croatia has accused the Serbs of killing its soldiers as they tried to surrender. In the area around Vukovar, the forced migration of Croats continues. The civilians being sent to the parts of Croatia still controlled from Zagreb and the soldiers to prisoner of war camps. The evidence of atrocities is not hard to find. The Croats claim that some of their guardsmen have been executed. In the northern suburb of Borovo, the Serbs told me that these men, all Serbian, had been used as human shields by the retreating Croats, then shot in the head at close range. Old hatreds have been fueled again by the fall of Vukovar, and the hope that the fighting would cease and no other town be leveled like this one is hardly being borne out by events. The government is being urged to make a statement on whether it's changed its mind over a referendum on Europe. John Major has said he doesn't favour one, but Mrs Thatcher said it would be necessary if any future government agrees to do away with the pound. John Major had already left the Commons for a reception when his office said it would be open for a future parliament to decide on a referendum. With the debate still going on, Labour seized on it as evidence that Mrs Thatcher, who had called for a referendum, was still in charge. John Major was back in the Commons to hear a Treasury Minister attempt to clarify the issue. The government doesn't, as my right honourable friend the Prime Minister made perfectly clear, intend to have a referendum on the outcome of the Maastricht negotiations. Other Conservative sceptics like Nigel Lawson and Norman Tebbit will speak when the debate resumes today. The Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir says Israel is willing to compromise on the venue for the next round of the Middle East peace talks. Speaking in the United States ahead of talks with the Secretary of State James Baker, Mr Shamir said Cyprus would be an acceptable site. The venue for the talks has been a major sticking point since last month's Madrid peace conference. America has offered the Soviet Union one and a quarter million dollars in credits to help buy food for its people this winter. The Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, arrives in Germany later today with a plea for more help. But he says even though there will be shortages this winter, there won't be a famine. Thank you, Sue. Well, more on all those stories shortly. But now this morning's Business Breakfast with Paul Burton and Alenka Frankel. <laughs> Hello. While Britain's politicians are debating our future policy towards closer European political and monetary union, the markets have been underlining the hard reality that the fate of sterling is already inextricably linked to the fortunes of the largest European economic power, Germany. The pound is currently the weakest currency in the ERM against the mark. It's currently standing against the mark almost a quarter of a fennec down overnight at 2.8748. It wasn't helped when on Monday the French government decided to raise its interest rates. Well, whether Britain will reluctantly have to follow the French could be decided by the meeting later this morning of the Bundesbank Council where a rise in German rates is on the agenda. Germany is still grappling with the hangover from unification with the East. Despite the best efforts of the Bundesbank, German inflation is 4%, compared with its target of just 2%, and the federal government has a large and growing budget deficit. The Bundesbank is concerned that wage settlements in the next pay round will be too high. Some German unions have already put in claims of around 10%, partly because of higher taxes raised to pay for unification. 
Helmut Schlesinger, president of the Bundesbank, is thought to be against raising interest rates further. It may be significant that no arrangements have been made for a press conference after the meeting, implying that no policy change is expected. Wider political concerns, including the Maastricht summit and the volatility of international financial markets, could make the five full-time directors of the Bundesbank reluctant to raise rates now. But the decision might turn on the votes of Germany's regional central banks. The 11 Landesbank presidents are more concerned about higher inflation at home than the difficulties of foreign governments who want lower interest rates. Well, joining me now is Angus Armstrong, who's International Economist at Morgan Grenfell. Angus, how much pressure is there on the Bundesbank to raise rates today? It does seem the situation has eased perhaps a little in the last uh, month or two. Well, the primary issue of concern here is inflation. The Bundesbank's remit is to keep inflation low and stable. Inflation is currently 3.5% in Germany, but it's going to rise to nearly 5% in the first quarter of next year, before easing off after that. Now that's a very un-Germanic rate of inflation. Now key is how they provide a, a, a signal to the unions who are going to be negotiating over wages in the coming months that inflation is going to be kept under control. That's the key issue they're going to be grappling with.